Now, Howard, thank you very much. Now, I'm not sure if you could just pick that up there, but we did just drop some big breaking news about the figures of asylum seekers currently in hotels. How do you feel about the government's plans to commandeer your site? Those figures are just absolutely astounding, aren't they? It, it's just incredible. Uh, our thoughts go out to the people of Braintree and the small communities around those sites, but at least they've got the politicians who've got the guts to stand up for them. Down here in Bexhill and Little Common, we've been abandoned by our politicians. They've left us to face this on our own. And this site behind me should be an ecological wonderland. Instead, it's going to be an economic disaster for our communities. And our politicians have abandoned us on that. Now, Howard, any idea that you guys might be able to claim massive economic damage or ecological damage or uh, potential human rights issues for the people who already live there, public health and safety being the obvious ones. The government doesn't want to listen to you on that. Why should they? Well, they should, because we are a community that's been starved of investment for, let's be honest, generations. This site stood empty for 10 years, and our council has done nothing, our politicians have done nothing to bring the investment that sites like this around the area really need. We are a town of 46,000 people that recently had our local politicians cancel a hotel development that would have created over 100 jobs. A t coastal town of 46,000 people without a hotel. The asylum seekers can't stay in our hotel because we don't have one. That's the kind of economic deprivation that we have been abandoned to. And local businesses have had enough. And this is our fight back. If they use this site, and we hope they don't, we hope that our politicians get the guts to move forwards with a legal action against the use. If they use this site, we want real economic investment. We want real economic value from this use of our town for this purpose. But is it as simple as putting a migrant base in your town will make everybody who already lives there poorer? No, not at all. We hope it doesn't. But we want, we want, as the Chamber of Commerce, we want guarantees. We want oversight. We want accountability. We want to make sure that the work being done in here to turn this into a migrant centre is done by local businesses, local tradesmen. We want that economic value bringing into the town, not disappearing up the A21 back to London on every occasion. There will be laundry there will be catering, there will be psychological services, there will be maintenance, there will be security. That economic value has to be the payback to our town if they're going to put this here. And we want that guaranteed and we want it accountable from our politicians. You know what, Howard, that is an absolutely brilliant argument because I completely understand that the idea of having a migrant centre in a small town is deeply unpalatable to the people of that town for all of the obvious reasons that we've banged on about loads here. But the one way of making that just about OK, I think, for people, is if the government can point it and go, you know what, your local development services, uh, your local psychiatry services, your local food supply services, all of these people, local businesses, will be bang involved in this. And it does actually maybe flip it on its head a bit. Uh, really, the government's got to do that, because if they don't, presumably, it's just a complete lose-lose. It, it's a lose-lose all round because this should be an ecological investment site. This should be part of the Green New Revolution that the government talks about. This site is valuable. It's put on the Pevensey levels. We have the medieval town um, village of North Eye that's as equal value to Stone Eng. We have the maritime conservation area. We should be developing this sympathetically as a an eco-tourism destination. Instead, it's being slaughtered by this. So we want guarantees. We want 
the checks and balances put in place to make sure that the economic value of this, first of all, doesn't go over 1,200 um, occupants at a time, which actually is based on the government figures, is 4,800 a year, plus staff, plus all the support services. The sewers here, we already have sewage pumped out on our seafront almost on a weekly basis that they seem incapable of doing anything about. The sewers here were designed for a prison sometime in the 1950s that were designed for 450 prisoners and that was reduced to 250 prisoners because it was overcrowded. Now they're going to dump into the sewage over 4,000 over 4, people a year, 5,000 people a year. Yeah, look, Howard, thank you very much. And can I just ask as well, I'd really enjoy talking to you again at some point in the coming weeks and months, and uh, it would be great to just follow this story through, really, with you. As Howard Martin there is the president of the Bexhill Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Look, the bad news, obviously, for him is that the latest government figures that just dropped minutes ago, 109,000 asylum seekers currently in supported accommodation. That's expected to rise to around 120 or 140 by the end of this year.